Councilmember Townsend. Present. Mayor Turnbow noted absent. We do have a quorum. If I could now have everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, I would be remiss if I didn't quote President Truman when uh, FDR died. He says, I feel like a bale of hay fell on me. So I know what President Truman felt like now, and I'm just doing a couple of proclamations. So again, bear with me. We have two proclamations this evening. Chief Zimmerman is, is already up here with me, and this is a proclamation for National Police Week, correct, Chief? And so I'm going to take a moment to read the proclamation. Whereas each year, America dedicates a week to honor law enforcement officers who perform dangerous and often thankless duties protecting their communities. During this time, we are especially mindful to pay tribute to those officers who have given their lives and made the ultimate sacrifice in the performance of those duties. And whereas in 1962, President John F. Kennedy signed into law designating May 15th as Peace Officer Memorials Day and the week in which that day falls is National Police Week. And whereas that law was amended in 1994, directing that the American flag be flown at half staff on all government buildings on May 15th. By, do by doing these things, we honor the sacrifices made by policemen and women every day throughout our country. Whereas officers of the Raymore Police Department have sworn an oath to uphold the law and provide dedicated service and protection for our community, and whereas it is important and, imp and proper that our citizens of Raymore recognize the contribution and efforts of our police, pl police officers, not just during this special week, but all throughout the year. Now, now therefore, I, Christopher P. Turnbull, or not I, but the mayor who's not here, mayor of the city of Raymore, Missouri, do hereby proclaim the week of May 12th through 18th, 2019 as National Police Week in the city of Raymore to honor the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our city and our citizens safe. In witness thereof, I have thereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Raymore to be affixed this 13th day of May. So this is from the mayor, the actual mayor. And I wanna say for those of you that not have had the opportunity to see our citizen survey, the, uh, the highest rated area that we had was citizen satisfaction with our police, which was at 100%. Well done, Chief. No, no comments? Uh, no All right. It's a first that I got Jan Zimmerman when she didn't have anything to say. So if I could get Mr. Kras to come over. And since I'm fond of quoting President Truman. When President Truman was elected a county judge in Jackson County, which is now the equivalent of a county commissioner, his signature project was to build good roads because he said everyone, but especially farmers, would appreciate good roads. So I think it's important to note that tonight because I think we have some of the best public works infrastructure, including our roads around. And this is a proclamation for National Public Works Week, am I correct? Yes. All right, and so I'll read the proclamation on this one. Whereas public works infrastructure, facilities, and services are of vital importance to sustainable communities and to the health, safety, and well-being of the people of Raymore. And whereas such facilities and services cannot be provided without the dedicated efforts of public public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees from the state and local units of government and the private sector who are responsible for and must plan, design, build, operate, and maintain the transportation, water supply, sewages and refuse disposal systems, public buildings, and other structures and, structures and facilities essential to serve our citizens. And whereas it is in the public interest of the citizens, civic leaders, and children of the United States to gain knowledge of and to maintain an interest and understand the importance of public work and public works programs in their respective communities, and whereas the year 2019 marks the 59th annual Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association, or APWA, 
Therefore, Christopher Turnbow, the mayor of the city, did pro proclaim this week of May 13th through 17th, 2019, as National Public Works Week in the city of Raymore, Missouri, and urges all citizens to recognize the importance of our public works department and the substantial contributions they make to our health, safety, and welfare. Hereon to set his hand and cause the seal of city of Raymore to be affixed this 13th day of May. Thank you. You He's keeping on pace with Chief Zimmerman this evening. I would like to say um, I, I, I note it quite a bit. I'm one of your biggest fans, I think. But I, for one, appreciate having less potholes, being able to see the lights or the, uh, the stripes, rather, when uh, it's dark and when it's raining and every other aspect that you maintain and your people maintain in the city, sir. Thank you and a job well done. Thank you. We have no personal appearances scheduled for this evening, so we'll move into staff reports. Mr. Fewborn. Thank you, sir. I would ask Mr. Cataret to make a staff report for development services. Thank you, sir. Just want to update council on a few upcoming meetings and hearings that we have scheduled. Our planning commission will meet next on uh, Tuesday, May 21st, at which time they will have a public hearing on the 30th Amendment to the Unified Development Code. This is the amendment that uh, is being brought forward that would allow uh, the keeping of chickens and fowl on single family residential lots within the city. Uh, the next day on uh, Wednesday, May 22nd, we'll have a good neighbor meeting uh, here in the council chambers at four o'clock. This is for a proposed a rezoning and development plan for uh, what's being called Conway Place. It's a 57 a unit townhome development being proposed uh, for the town center area, which is the area uh, basically on both sides of Conway Street, north of Pine Street. Uh, the western boundary would be Sunset Lane. So all the undeveloped land you see in there, or most of the undeveloped land in there, is being proposed for this development. So it requires a rezoning from uh, commercial to residential or planned unit development. And then they have a development plan that would show the what the units will look like and the layout of the units. Um, so that's the Good Neighbor meeting, um, setting forth uh, a discussion by the Planning Commission for their June 18th meeting on the topic. And then on June 4th, the Planning and Zoning Commission has two items they'll consider. One will be an amend, amended site plan for the lofts at Fox Ridge Apartment Community uh, in the Eagle Glen subdivision. Uh, the developers coming forward, they have added some amenities, some things that were discussed that uh, the community would like, which includes the addition of garage units for the, for the, uh, for the entire development. So. Um, that's a very nice amenity that they have decided to add. They're also making some changes with the clubhouse. They reoriented it to create a, actually a better entrance feature and uh, more green space common area for the residents to enjoy. So nice improvements to the site plan. Uh, we, we wanted to have the Planning Commission take a look again at that um, before that project moves forward. We anticipate uh, site clearing to begin at the end of the month. Uh, so they are moving forward with that project. Also that evening would be our annual review, a general review of the Unified Development Code. We do every year just to look through the, the aspects of that, of that code. Uh, so that's currently what we have scheduled for our boards and commissions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good news all around, Mr. Cataret. Any questions of Mr. Cataret? Mr. Fielborn? Thank you, Mr. Cataret. I would ask Chief Zimmerman to make a report for police emergency management. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn. Um, I, I felt like you have an item um, on your cons consent agenda um, that I'll explain here a little bit more fully, uh, but I felt like it was an appropriate time to talk about the status of the command post uh, communications vehicle, um, which we are very excited that uh, work is coming along on the vehicle. Um, it should be completed later this year and be fully operational uh, after software installation and training uh, in early 2020. Uh, the command vehicle is currently being built from scratch, as we've told you all um, uh, uh, up in Wisconsin, up at LDV, uh, and the slide out, um, and 
Jim, if you can put that up on the screen for the council members. Uh, the slide out is the first thing that's being built. And uh, so the next step will be, um, and that's our slide out that you're looking at. I know they all kind of look alike, but um, uh, will be the frame and the shell of the vehicle. So we should start seeing the vehicle tape taking shape, um, you know, during the next 30 days or so. Um, the LDV electrical engineers are now looking through our commu proposed communications equipment package for Motorola and Cominco. Uh, and we'll customize our wiring and electrical needs throughout um, the summer. So um, that vehicle will be able to function as a standalone uh, communications vehicle if something should happen to our dispatch center uh, here at City Hall. Um, we'll be sending representatives from our work group um, up to LDV a, a couple more times throughout the build out process uh, to check on the status of the build, deliver some of that equipment that uh, I mentioned, the communications equipment uh, in late summer and early fall. Um, and then we'll also be working with South Metro, and I know you see Chief Stevens behind me, and I will be introducing him in a second, um, to begin the process of training our drivers um, within the police department uh, on the vehicle by first learning to drive the large vehicles like the fire trucks. I don't think he's gonna actually let us drive any fire trucks, just so you know. Um, which are nearly identical in length to the command vehicle. And then final construction meetings to go over any changes um, will take place uh, in the fall of this year. Uh, LDV will be routinely sending um, those updates of, of things that are happening with the build on our vehicle. Um, so we'll be able to share those um, with you as time goes on. Uh, as I mentioned, um, you will see on your consent agenda, um, item D, um, that uh, um, as part of our ongoing partnership um, with uh, South Metropolitan uh, Fire Protection District, um, they have been part of our work group and part of the planning of this vehicle. And, uh, and so in recognition of our uh, multiple um, or our mutual aid situations, uh, they have dis expressed a desire to make a monetary contribution toward our vehicle. And I would like to introduce um, Chief Lee Stevens to come up and, uh, and say a few words. I would just like to thank uh, the council and city uh, leadership uh, for involving the, the fire district in this endeavor on the command vehicle. Uh, the fire district feels this will be a tremendous as asset for the community. Uh, and the partnership, like uh, Chief Zimmerman said, has been outstanding. So with that, I'd like to present a check to the city for $42,500. <laughs> the story on the, the text message? Yeah, okay. but I asked I ask him for a million. But, he did, she did ask me for a million. Uh, I told her that I probably would, this would be my last check as fire chief. Uh, so we settled on 42.5. So uh, again, thank you all for the partnership. Uh, I do have one other thing I'd like to uh, tell the board, or the council, I'm sorry, I'm used to a board, so a council. Uh, with the help of the Public Works and uh, the Police Department for Dispatch, uh, the South Metropolitan Fire Protection District has attained a Class 1 ISO rating, which is uh, probably only uh, 8 to 10 departments in the whole state of Missouri. And there's only 450 in the whole country. So we're very excited about that. Uh, it's a classification code, PPC code, it's a public protection code. And we are a one in the city of Raymore. So just wanted to let you all know that. Chief, thank you very much for being here this evening and please accept my thanks for your department having the vision to see the value that that vehicle will be, not just to our city, but to the entire area and the community. God willing, we won't have to use it very often, but should we have to activate a NIMS scenario, that, that, build, that vehicle will be incredibly invalued, invaluable to your department, our department, and, and every citizen of this area. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I was just going to echo the thanks and congratulations. Thank you. I, I wanted a really big check like the public <laughs> right, 
Are there any questions of Chief Zimmerman? Mr. Fearborn? Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Chief. So, um, just update the council very quickly. Uh, the, we have posted for a special meeting of the city council for tomorrow night at staff's request and the mayor, mayor pro tem's approval. Uh, that meeting will be tomorrow night, May 14th at 6.30 p.m. here in council chambers. It will be an open meeting. Uh, single topic on the agenda to discuss the disposition of the city's contract with Jim's disposal service. There will be a work session meeting next Monday night, May 20th at 6.30 p.m. There are currently three topics on for that particular meeting. First topic is a bond update, parks projects. Second topic is a parks facility, facilities usage update. Thought you all might wanna know how Centerview is, is turning out and how the rack are turning out. Uh, final item will be the council asked in May for an update on the Oats bus program. We'll be giving that to you. I would suspect a strong possibility of an executive session next Monday night as well, in addition to tonight's. That concludes staff reports this evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn. We have no committee reports this evening, and therefore we'll move into the consent agenda. I would entertain a motion at this time to address the five items on the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve the consent agenda to include Item A, City Council Minutes, April 22nd, 2019. Item B, City Council Special Minutes, Meeting Minutes, April 29th, 2019. Item C, Raymore Activity Center Project Screen Installation, Acceptance and Final Payment. Item D, Acceptance of South Metropolitan Fire District Contribution for Command Vehicle. Item E, 2018 Street Preservation Project Acceptance and Final Payment. Second. I have a motion and a second on all five items on the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? As there is no discussion, can I please have all those in favor of the motion raise your hand. I forget, I have to vote on this myself as well. Vote is unanimous, seven in favor, zero opposed, no abstentions. I'm sorry, I keep thinking the mayor's not here, we're missing one, but he doesn't vote when he's here. Thank you. Eight zero, let the record reflect that. We will now move into the unfinished business portion of the meeting. We will start with item A, which is the purchase of two portable lift station generator, or lift station emergency generators. May I have the second reading of Bill 3441 by title only, Ms. Warner? The second reading of Bill 3441 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, establishing an agreement for the purchase of two lift station emergency generators. As this is a second read, at this time I would entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3441. Ms. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 3441, purchase of two portable lift station emergency generators. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3441. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, can I have those in favor of the motion please raise your hand. Motion passes unanimously, 8-0. Moving on to item B, which is award of contract for the Jefferson Street culvert replacement. May I have second reading of Bill 3446 by title only, Ms. Warner. The second reading of Bill 3446 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Bright Construction LLC for the Jefferson Street culvert replacement City project number 19-329-201 in the amount of $33,552 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. At this time, I would entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3446. Is that correct? 3446, yes. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 3446, the Ward of Contract, Jefferson Street Culvert Replacement. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the topic? Seeing none, may I have all those in favor, please raise your hand. 
Motion passes unanimously 8-0. We'll move on to item C, which is award of contract fire hydrant replacement. Ms. Warner, may I have the second reading of Bill 3447 by title only? The second reading of Bill 3447 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymour, Missouri, authorizing the City Manager to enter into an agreement with JNN Utilities, Inc. for the fire hydrant replacement. City Project Number 19-328-201 in the amount of $95,405 and authorizing the City Manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. At this time, I would entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3447. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 3447, the Water Contract Fire Hydrant Replacement. Second. I have a motion and a second in favor of Bill 3447. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, can I have all those in favor of the motion please raise your hand. Motion passes unanimously 8-0. Final item of unfinished business this evening is award of contract for the 2019 curb project. Ms. Warner may I have the second reading of Bill 3451 by title only. The second reading of Bill 3451 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Terry Snelling Construction, Inc. for the 2019 curb project. City project number 19-327-201 in the amount of $384,832 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. At this time, I would entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 3451. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 3451, award a contract 2019 curb project. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3451. Is there any discussion? Ms. Abdelgawad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Tim. Um, I sent a message to Mr. Fearborn last week, I believe, about some curbs in Ward 4 that are pretty bad. And so just, I remember this question was asked last time. Because this contract is more than $200,000 less than the amount budgeted, that extra money is going to go to replace curbs that are found to be failing that aren't on this list. We're actually going to be bringing you a formal program for that because of the question, council member. Okay, thank you. Be addressing that in work session in the future, sir. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes unanimously 8-0. We will now move into the new business section of the meeting. The first item of business this evening deals with several liquor license renewals of various businesses in town. The item does call for a public, public hearing. At this time, I will open the public hearing by asking for a staff report. Thank you, sir. I would ask Ms. Warner to make a staff report on this agenda item. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Applications for renewal of liquor licenses are required to be filed with the city clerk on or before May 1st, as provided for in section 600.050E of the city code. At the request of the owner of Freedom Plaza, located at 505 East Walnut, their application has been removed for consideration with the group renewal of these liquor licenses for this evening. Remaining applications published on the agenda were advertised and are the subject of this public hearing for the 2019-2020 liquor license year, which runs July 1st through June 30th. The businesses have met compliance with city code requirements and approval of a majority of the city council is required. Approval to obtain a city license for liquor sales is contingent upon approval of the state of Missouri liquor licenses. Representatives from those businesses published on this agenda are in attendance should council have questions. And then as outlined in city code section 600.090C of the city code, any person providing testimony pertaining to the liquor license applications will be sworn to tell the truth by the city clerk and those statements will be entered into the record. Um, that concludes my staff report. I would be happy to answer any questions should council have some. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Are there any questions for Ms. Warner? Mr. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, clarification on the list. Um, so Freedom Plaza is being removed at their request and Freedom Stop is still on the list? That's correct. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Any other questions? The public hearing is still open, so at this time we will hear and entertain comments from persons who wish to speak on this matter. For those who wish to speak, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, and keep your comments to a maximum of five minutes. And would those people from the general public need to be sworn in as well, Ms. Warner? Yes, sir, anyone making comments, correct. Thank you. Anyone from the public who would like to speak? Would any of the applicants care to come up and speak on this matter? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. and move to council discussion. I would entertain a motion on this matter at this time. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve the liquor license applications as listed with the exception of the one removed, Freedom Plaza 505 East Walnut. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Can I pl have please the, please have those in favor raise your hand. The liquor licenses are renewed by a vote of eight zero. This matter is concluded. Thank you. And we will move on to item B in the agenda, which is a request for approval of the Dean Commercial Preliminary Plat. May we have the initial reading of Resolution nineteen twenty four, Miss Warner. The reading of Resolution 19-24 by title only, a resolution of the Raymore City Council approving the Dean Commercial Preliminary Plat located in the northeast quarter of Section 17, Township 46 North, Range 32 West, Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. And is there a, I'm sorry, public hearing. So this item does require a public hearing. At this time, I will open the public hearing and ask for a staff report. Thank you, sir. I would ask Mr. Cataret to make a staff report on this agenda item. Thank you, sir. Uh, resolution 19-24 is a request for a preliminary plat approval for the proposed 40-acre uh, Dean Commercial Preliminary Plat. Uh, this application was filed by uh, B&M Dean Family Farm, LLC. Property uh, is about 40 acres, generally located at the uh, southwest corner of 58 Highway at Fox Ridge Drive. And it is uh, currently zoned uh, C3 commercial, which is our regional commercial uh, district. Got a 40 acre tract, they're proposing to subdivide it into 11 lots. Since it is a public hearing, we are required to enter certain items into the record. I want to enter the mail notices to all the adjoining property owners, the notice of publication in the journal, our unified development code, the application that was submitted, our growth management plan, and the staff report that was submitted to you this evening. Uh, we, this preliminary plat's been under review for several months by the city. We did hold a good neighbor meeting uh, back in December of two, 2018. We did have a few residents attend that meeting, had a few questions. I've outlined those uh, in the staff report for your review. The engineering division has reviewed the required uh, stormwater study that was submitted, as well as the required uh, traffic study. And they did find that those studies and the preliminary plat uh, do comply with the standards that have been adopted by the city. Uh, for those familiar with the property, there are two uh, smaller stream corridors that cross through the property. Uh, these two are identified on our stream buffer ordinance. The preliminary plat uh, does indicate the required buffer areas for those two streams. At this time, they do not plan with this plat any changes to those stream corridors. I do want to note the traffic study outlines several improvements that may be necessary, uh, specifically along 58 Highway and Fox Ridge Drive, really dependent upon timing of when lots are, are developed and the traffic counts that would be uh, direct to those improvements. Uh, improvements that have been outlined would be uh, for eastbound traffic would be right turn lanes at both Lovegrass Boulevard, which would be the uh, western access to the site and, and Rye Drive, which would be on the eastern side. Rye Drive would actually uh, align with the Willowind entrance to the north. Those two would be proposed to have right turn lanes. There would also be at some point a right turn lane 
at the light at Fox Ridge Drive for those traveling southbound on Fox Ridge Drive. And then when you're traveling on Fox Ridge Drive, there's a potential for a right turn lane into the site at the first main entrance. The uh, Planning and Zoning Commission did hold a public hearing and considered this a preliminary plat at this May 7th meeting. They did vote 6-0 to accept the proposed findings of fact and for this request for preliminary plat approval to the council with the recommendation of approval subject to the three conditions that staff had uh, proposed and outlined in the staff report. Uh, the applicants have agreed to those to those conditions. We have discussed them at length with the uh, with the property owner and the uh, the applicant. I do want to note that the applicant's engineer, Mr. Steve Wargers, in the audience, as well as uh, Jeff D, uh, representing the property ownership group. We did include the uh, engineering uh, review, which is pretty extensive on a project of this site uh, for your review as well. Uh, that would conclude staff report, sir. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions of Mr. Cataret? Mr. Townsend. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. I had a quick question, Mr. Cataret, on the traffic study you were mentioning. Um, just clarify as I'm looking at the rendering that's in our packet here uh, and I orient the map you know facing north so you were saying we would have right lanes added in uh, to accommodate and I'm looking at two entrance points off of 58 that is correct there would be uh, eventually a right turn lane for both of those access points both of those accesses okay added so would that widen it will it won't widen the travel lanes it will simply be a deceleration lane for you to slow down as you're making the turning movement making the turn okay and similarly along fox ridge there will be right turn lanes off of fox ridge into those western entrances of the lots at, at the at yes there could be again could those be. are though all these uh, turn lanes are really dependent on the actual traffic volumes and the timing of it okay. so it may or may not occur with the first lot development but as they compound one another in traffic volume you could see those improvements okay. so as we build out and get more tenants and traffic volume then those would be implemented that's as correct it's okay. somewhat outlined in the conditions that we have as well Excellent. i just wanted to clarify as i looked at it here so thank you Anyone else, Ms. Abdelgawa? Thank you, Mr. Mayor Tim. Just a quick question, something I was wondering as I was looking at this. Is this going to um, have a negative impact on that little piece of property right there on Mott Road that's kind of left over in that other, in the other business development there? I can't think of what it's called, where Culver's is. And it's part of the Legends development. There. The, yeah. The, uh, it would, we don't believe it will have a negative impact. In fact, we're trying to, with the layout of the roads, if you see where there's a private drive segment that um, is proposed where it could continue over to Mott Drive, depending upon how that lot uh, in that development would would um, be built out. So at this point, it is in a, in, off of Mott Drive, the entire undeveloped land down until you get to the Ridgeway Villas development is all commercial. It is one lot, about two acres in size. So depending upon how that would develop is whether there would be a connection between the two projects. Uh, this, this preliminary plan does show Ridgeway Villa, Ridgeway Drive being the connection to Ridgeway Villas. Um, but we believe that, you know, again, with what's proposed with this preliminary plan, it's left the option open for connectivity. Any other questions for Mr. Cataret? The public hearing is still open at this time. We will hear comments from persons who wish to speak on this matter. For those who wish to speak, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, and keep your comments to a maximum of five minutes. Steve Borger, Steve Steve Renaissance Infrastructure Consulting, 5015 Northwest Canal Street, Riverside, Missouri, uh, representing the uh, developer and owner of the property. Uh, we're in agreement, as I said, with all the conditions. Just wanted to let you know we're here to answer whatever questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Warger. Anyone else from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing on this matter and we'll move to council discussion. I would entertain a motion on this item at this time. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve resolution 1924, Dean Commercial Preliminary Plat. Point of order, is it 1924 or 1824? 
1924, I believe, is the correct okay. title. Sorry about that. I'll second the motion on resolution 1924. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If there's no discussion, can I please have those in favor raise your hand? Motion passes unanimously, 8-0. We'll move on to item C on the agenda, which is the Arboretum Playground Improvements. May we please have the initial reading of Bill 3453 by title only, Ms. Warner. The first reading of Bill 3453 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving an agreement with Fry & Associates, Inc. in the amount of $42,566.36 to provide and install play equipment play equipment at Memorial Park and authorizing the city manager to make change orders within established budget constraints. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Mr. Fearborn, is there a staff report on this item? Thank you, sir. I would ask Mr. Mustine to make the staff report on this agenda item. Thank you, sir. Mayor Pro Tem, Council. Uh, we come tonight with a uh, proposal for an upgrade to our playground. It's a pretty exciting project for us as this is, pl particular playground is the oldest equipment that we have in our city. So it's long overdue and it needs an upgrade. Um, we named this the Arboretum Playground because it's very confusing to say the North Playground at the West Shelter on the west side of Memorial Park. So we identified it as the Arboretum area. I've uh, provided some photos and pictures, aerial pictures in the packet to give you a general idea where we're at. Initially, the, uh, the equipment that's out there some, in some cases, were installed in 1987, the little diggers, and they've been repaired over the years. Um, so it's just time for an upgrade. What we've done is we've put a, a proposal together utilizing some um, overstock items that we were able to uh, get a hold of at a, a very good price. Uh, we were able to vet these through our, the, uh, I believe it's the NPP Gov, so they've already been through quoted and for installation and pricing. This is a, this is a great upgrade. We want to do a mix of surface between poured in place rubber, a hard rubber surface, and a regular wood fiber mulch in that area. We will keep the swing sets because we've identified, we've, we've looked at those, inspected those, but we are going to swap out some swings and do, do some different things with that. A couple of the pieces also have some all-inclusive uh, components to them. The cozy, the, uh, cozy cocoon is um, basically designed for uh, children with autism. It, it, so it works well with that, with the port in place rubber. So it's a good project. We're uh, happy to answer any questions. We have increased the size of the play area. So as we remove the, the things, we are making it bigger. It'll be about 3,500 square foot total um, play area once we're done with that. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great project, Mr. Mustine. Are there any questions for Mr. Mustine? Mr. Barber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, yeah, I noticed on the packet you said the old equipment was 25 years old, but I was kind of doing my math when you said 86. Yes. That's a little more than 25 years. So um, I took the youngest piece. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. That. I got you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and I was just curious what this new new equipment that we put in. What are you looking at the um, life cycle of it? Again? Okay. Uh, typically, the the warranty of different I, of equipment that they have different warranty years. So life expectancy of general pl outdoor play equipment is usually between 20 and 25 years. And so we have well run our course on what was there. And if you think of Recreation Park, the playground out there, it is, it needs to be replaced, which we have that program for next year. But it's right at that 18 to 20 year time frame. So that's, that tends to uh, stand pretty true being around that 20 year time life expectancy. Any other questions of Mr. Mustine? Ms. Abdelgawad. Just, just a comment, for 20 to 25 years old, Rec Park's not that bad. <laughs> it's in pretty decent shape. Um, I'm excited to see some just different kinds of playground equipment. So I'm, this is really cool. The, the spinning cozy cocoon will be good for, for kiddos. And then the swing along. I've talked to lots of families who've seen those online and will be really excited. There will probably be a line for that. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Mustine. Thank you, sir. At this time, I would entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 3453. Mr. Mayor, pro tem, I move that we approve Bill 3453, Memorial Park Arboretum Playground Improvements. I'll second that. 
I do have a motion and second on the floor. Is there any discussion on this topic? As there's no discussion, can I please have those in favor of the motion raise your hand? Motion passes 8-0. Item D on the agenda tonight is an award of contract to WasteQuip. Am I saying that properly, sir? Thank you. Uh, for solid waste and recycling carts. Due to time constraints, I have authorized this as an emergency reading of this bill. Ms. Warner, may we start by having the first reading of Bill 3454 by title only? The first reading of Bill 3454 by title only an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with WasteQuip in the amount of $795,246.23 for the fabrication and delivery of solid waste and recycling containers and to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Mr. Fearborn, do we have a staff report on this item? Thank you, sir. I would ask Mr. Eakey to make a staff report on this agenda item. Thank you, sir. To provide a high quality solid waste recycling program for our residents, staff has determined that the best course of action would be to purchase our own carts and containers for all eligible residents through the city's building and equipment replacement fund. The city of Raymore has been a member of the Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing Group since 2010 to the recommended vendor, Waste Equip, also known as Toter, is also a member and provides the solid waste and recycling containers to municipalities across the country. The contract before you would cover the fabrication, the delivery, and a 15-year warranty on all containers that we'd be purchasing. A budget amendment to reflect the purchase from the fund follows the, follows the item if approved by council. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions of Mr. Eakey? I, I have one. I understand, Mr. Eakey, that these carts are very high grade that we're gonna be purchasing, perhaps one of the highest grades that they offer. Is that correct or could you expand on that if that's correct? Yes, we, as we've done our research, we have found that these really are not only industry standard, but they're preferred by a lot of the vendors um, as to the high quality, the high warranty, um, and professionalism of the group that puts these together. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Townsend. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. I did have one real quick question. On the statement within the justification, and just a quick, on the, um, as, where it speaks to the monthly trash rate, excuse me, Staff will build the cost um, of the contract into the regular monthly r trash rate. Is that going to be an increase or is that kind of absorbed? Can you explain that a little bit? When we, when we have a vendor in who is uh, providing the service, the last three vendors that have done so, the, the actual price of the carts is amortized out over the life of the contract. In this case, we will be getting rid of the existing vendor's carts, so that particular price will not need to be into that contract. And we'll be able to flesh that out, I think, a little bit more with a picture for the council tomorrow night. But the intention would be that the same thing applies, even though they're city-owned, a component of the monthly fee would be amortized out. The advantage is, because we're paying our own fund back, we can amortize that amount out over a longer period of time when contractors are in here doing that, they have to limit the amortization period to the three years that the contract is in place for. So we hope to be able to provide a little bit of relief in that regard. And we're doing six. More than likely, yes, sir. If approved, we're right. doing six, yes, okay. So in, in layman's turn, for those who are listening, the $12.41 is likely the level or we have more discussion uh, again we need to more discuss discussion. that Excellent. that's correct sir. thank you mr burke thank you mr mayor, mayor pro tem um as uh councilman townsend was discussing the uh the price if i can clarify in the past we the uh, cost of the carts like two vendors ago before gyms the uh, residents paid for those that were eventually taken away at the end of that contract. So in a way, this is helping um, the cost in the long run for the residents. We certainly hope so. Having, having control of the carts, having control of the period of time to which the fund is being paid back compared to the three-year time frame that was in place before, I think are both in favor. So to follow up, um, so any time in the next 15 years with that warranty that we happen to switch vendors, we will not have to charge the residents that charge every time we get a new vendor. That is correct. Once the fund is paid back, the carts are ours. That's the end of it. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Berenson? 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. And, and Councilman Burke brings up, you know, these carts are warrantied 15 years, so we would expect to get 15 to 20 years out of these carts, hopefully. Obviously, in the next 15 to 20 years, we're gonna be choosing, there's a likelihood we'll be having different contractors through that 20 year lifespan of these carts. If you remember back when we switched contractors the last time, partially the fault of the weather, it was a terrible time of year, and that was a, there were some growing pains there with, uh, with adding the new carts, removing the old carts. Uh, I think this idea from city staff is, is a fantastic idea for several reasons. It, over the years, our carts are gonna be the same. Um, they are the highest grade in the industry, so there should not be any issues with, with different trucks being able to utilize these carts. And also, we will not have to go through the growing pains ever again, very likely of, of having to switch out carts if we were to switch out contractors in the future. So I uh, would like to thank city staff's uh, foresight on this, and I look forward to this being a very successful move. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Eakey or Mr. Fearborn? Mr. Barber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, on the, I just had a question on the extended warranty. It had a, um, a contingency that the, another city had to be involved correct to get that extended warranty. If that didn't happen, would there be an, ex an additional cost to that um, on the extended warranty, or would we not? Originally that contingency there? was in place, but as we've been moving forward, as long as we were to go with, use the source well contract through Waste Equip, that 15 year warranty would be in place for us. Okay, very good. And I'd just like to add just an observation and a comment about how these um, carts are paid for. When we, um, when we changed vendors this last time, that explains why they, the, um, the old company came down the street and literally took the carts in my neighborhood, put them in a trash compactor and smashed them and got rid of them. They, they'd already wrote them off and um, didn't, you know, didn't need them anymore. Any other questions of Mr. Eakey or Mr. Fearborn? At this time, I would entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 3454. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 3454, award a contract, waste quip for solid waste and recycling carts. Second. I do have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion on this matter? If there's no further discussion. Can I please have all those in favor of the motion raise your hand? Motion passes 8-0. As I previously mentioned, this bill is authorized for an emergency read this evening due to time constraints. At this time, as much as it pains her, I must ask, <laughs> must ask Ms. Warner for the second reading of Bill 3454 in its entirety, please. The second reading of Bill 3454 in its entirety. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Waste Quip in the amount of $795,246.23 for the fabrication and delivery of solid waste and recycling containers and to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Whereas the city is committed to providing quality solid waste and recycling programs to all eligible residents, and whereas to accomplish this, the city council has determined it is best, it is best to purchase its own solid waste and recycling containers for all residents in this program, and whereas Waste Quip, doing business as Toter, provided the best opportunity to purchase solid waste and recycling containers as a member of the Sourcewell Governmental Cooperative Purchasing Program. Now therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Raymore, Missouri as follows. Section one, the city manager is authorized to enter into a contract in the amount of $795,246.23 with waste quip for the fabrication and delivery of solid waste and recycling containers. Section two, the city manager and city clerk are authorized to execute the contract attached as exhibit A on behalf of the city of Raymore. Section three, the city manager is authorized to approve change orders for this project within established budget constraints. Section four, emergency reading. This bill is declared and authorized as an emergency and will be read in its entirety. Section five, effective date. The effective date of approval of this ordinance shall be coincidental with the mayor's signature and attestation by the city clerk. Section six, severability. If any section, subsection, sentence, clause, phrase, or portion of this ordinance is for any reason held invalid or unconstitutional, 
by any court of competent jurisdiction. Such portions shall be a deemed and separate, distinct, and independent provision, and such holdings shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions thereof. Duly read this first time this 13th day of May, 2019. Be it remembered that the above ordinance was approved and adopted this 13th day of May, 2019, by the following vote. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Uh, we've already had a staff report on this item, but Mr. Fearborn, is there anything that your staff would like to add at this point? That concludes staff reports, sir. Thank you. At this time, I would entertain a motion to dispose of the second reading of Bill 3454. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move we approve Bill 3454, award a contract, waste quip for solid waste and recycling carts. Second. I have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any further discussion on this item? As there is no discussion, can I please have all those in favor raise your hand? Motion passes 8-0, unanimous. Final item on the agenda this evening of new business is a budget amendment, solid waste and recycling carts. Ms. Warner, can we have the initial reading of Bill 3455 by title only, please? The first reading of Bill 3455 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing an amendment to the fiscal year 2019 capital budget. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Mr. Fearborn, do you have a staff report on this item? Thank you, sir. I would ask Mr. Eakey to make a staff report on this item. Thank you, sir. Bill 3455 is the second step in the purchase of the solid waste and recycling carts through the source well contract with Waste Equip. The city recommends the purchase of the solid waste and recycling carts in order to provide the high quality waste and recycling program. The recommendation is to purchase the containers using funds from the Building and Equipment Replacement Program Fund. In order to make this purchase, it's necessary to amend the FY19 capital budget to include the purchase for both types of carts. Thank you, sir. Any questions of Mr. Eakey? I have just one for clarification. So you've explained to us that the, the funds to purchase the carts would come out of what we lovingly know as the BURP fund or Building and Equipment or Emergency Replacement Fund, which I think is a, a fantastic um, conduit that staff has placed within our budget every year for things such as this. When we have uh, a vehicle failure, we have the VERP fund, we have a vehicle failure, or we have a failure with the building, we have a fund to go through this and then we are going to discuss going forward in work session how the carts are to be reimbursed and hopefully without any additional cost to the citizens and so this is a pretty solid financial plan is that a pretty fair statement sir yeah, that is correct sir okay thank you no further questions of staff at this time i would entertain a motion to dispose the first reading of bill 3455 Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move we approve Bill 3455, Budget Amendment, Solid Waste and Recycling Carts. Second. I have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any further discussion on this item? If there's no further discussion, can I please have all those in favor raise your hand? Motion passes unanimously, 8-0. We will now move into the public comments section of the meeting. Anyone? who wishes to speak may proceed to the podium, provide your name and address for the record. You will not need to be sworn in. And please keep your comments to five minutes or less. Anyone going once, going twice. We will now move on to council member comments. Ah, this is uh, such Chris's area, but Mr. Berenson, I believe I'll start with you this evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. And, uh, I'd like to tell you, you did a, a fantastic job tonight. Uh, just, just seamless from start to finish, so uh, very good job. Thank you. I'll keep my comments short on the rest of the meeting. There are a lot of good things here uh, for citizens to be happy about. You know, we uh, got a nice donation from South Metro Fire Department. It's nice to have a little bit of extra funds to help pay for our uh, emergency response vehicle, so uh, thank you, Chief, for that. Also, you know, little things like, well, that are big things, street preservation and, and the curb project. So uh, that will be money uh, very well spent as well. And for some people, there are a lot of new or renewed liquor licenses in town. So I'm sure that'll make some people happy as well too. Uh, one thing that caught my attention is the, uh, the uh, Dean commercial preliminary plat. If you look at that, there are 11 uh, commercial lots in that. So there should be a lot of good things coming out of that. Hopefully some things residents have been asking for for a long time. And uh, if anybody out there has any requests, uh, Matt Tapp is probably the person you want to, yeah. 
Chick-fil-A would be mine and, and Tom Serco, uh, Olive Garden, sir, is that? Red Lobster. <laughs> Lobster. That'll conclude my comments, sir. Thank you. Ms. Abdelgawad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I just wanna take a minute and re-recognize, maybe you would say, um, Public Works for Public Works Week. Uh, they, do, they do many, many unnoticed things, and so it's nice to set aside a week for them. Um, I want to thank and congratulate both South Metro Fire District, as I said earlier, thank them for contributing um, and working so closely with us on our emergency command vehicle, and also congrats on their one rating. It sounded like, I don't understand exactly what that means, I'll admit, but it sounded like quite, quite a thing to be one of so very few in the state and the country. Um, joining the ranks of organizations in our city who are top rated. Um, and then finally, of course, I have to mention National Police Week. Um, the proclamation read by the Mayor Pro Tem said, you know, our officers perform dangerous, often <coughs> thankless duties protecting their communities. And as, as a police officer's wife, I would be remiss if I didn't add to that 24 seven weekends and holidays um, on call, most of them on call, on call all the time, the overtime hours they work um, are endless. And um, just to mention that Police Week is really designed to honor those who've given their lives, made the ultimate sacrifice. Um, I just wanted to bring that out again because that's, there's a lot going on in Washington DC this week, um, really showing respect to the families, the widows of the officers who've been killed in the line of duty. And so if you have a chance this week when you're out and about and see a police officer, just take a minute and thank him or her for the time that they spend on the streets. Um, the, the way they put their life on the line every day for all of us and, um, and take a minute just to give thanks to those who did give the ultimate sacrifice and if you have an opportunity to um, reach out to a family of a fallen officer, that's always appreciated. Um, and my personal piece, if you have an opportunity to reach out to the families of current officers, um, it has been for several years a trying time for officers on the streets and their families and we worry about them and so if you have a chance to give, give thanks to the families of the officers that are out there every night and day, um, that also is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, and the council member from the Great Ward Three, Mr. Barber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I wanna start off by saying you did an excellent job. I would give you a grade of A minus, only um, not an A because I don't want you to get a big head, but uh, did an excellent job. Um, I, Mr. Delgawad said, uh, couldn't, I mean, I couldn't say it any better, but uh, I think something that kind of stuck in my mind in your comments was, uh, the statement taken, taking for granted. And I think um, we do take uh, the people that um, uh, serve this city, our public work people and our police department, we do at times I think take that for granted because we're just kind of, they, they are so good, we're just kind of used to it. But we don't realize, you know, because you're married to an officer, and Mr. Crass knows it takes a lot of work, a lot of planning, a lot of ded dedicated people to stay at the top of your game. So I really appreci appreciate what they do for us and uh, make this city work. Uh, in, in kind of conjunction today outside my office, I saw this strange piece of equipment kind of moving around and just doing, a, you know, it was city workers, but I couldn't recognize it. So I went up and asked them and it was our mud jacker and they're out there mud jacking. And I just think of my short time on the council of some of the extra things that we have put on that helps our citizens, it actually saves us money. The comment was made that we only used to get just a little bit of money for mud jacking and it wasn't enough. Now we can do is all the mud jacking because we got our own equipment. So things like that um, um, really makes a difference. Another thing I wanted to uh, kind of stuck in my mind today was the partnership. Um, the, um, the fire district coming in here and, and really validating our command center, saying that, you know, good job, we're gonna, we need that. Uh, it's, one of, it's like insurance, um, you hope you don't have to use it, but when you do need it, you're sure glad you got it. Um, and um, coming forth with some money to help, that was nice too. So anytime that we can partnership with um, uh, a group, uh, the city, I think that uh, um, it, it just it just helps makes our city stronger. 
So um, uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think we'll move to you, Mr. Serco. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tim. Yeah, it's kind of adding on to some of what everybody said tonight. Of course, Police Week, uh, when you get a 100% uh, satisfaction from a city, I don't think you go to any city around, you're going to get 100% satisfaction on law enforcement like we did in Raymore. I mean, that's uh, miraculous. I think people don't have a, can fathom how important that is. Uh, we have a great police department, and I tell people all the time, when you see your officers going down the street, wave at them. When you see them going to the store, going somewhere, walking, walk up and shake their hands. Acknowledge they're there. Tell them you got their back. Tell them you support them, because this means a lot to our police department and all of them, because it's very important. Uh, it's great that we have such a, a law enforcement. That's why people come here. We did our surveys because they're safe. The police, the fire, schools are safe, and that's why they come to Raymore. And with this kind of a, uh, uh, when we had that survey, it tells it all on that side of it for the police department. So thank you uh, very much for all you guys do for us. We thank you, and we never forget how important you guys are and your families. You got families to go home to. This is your job, and we hope and pray all the time that you're safe. Uh, another thing on the fire department, yeah, South Metro's, you know, they join in. They're a great organization, probably one of the best fires there are uh, around, and they will join in with the city like they've done and give money to the city, uh, willing to train the drivers. I've drove a lot of big rigs, a lot of drivers. It's not easy. you got to really learn how to drive these things and be uh, in the streets and small confinements with cars and traffic. So it's great they're going to come forward, uh, the chief, and teach our people how to drive them safely. That's, uh, that's a big uh, move on their part too to be so uh, cohesive with us and it's very important again their safety and what they do for our area as a fire district. Uh, public works again you can't say nothing for all of our city staff the public works and what we do and how they hard they work and I tell people all the time when they talk about the city and the people and the different uh, groups we have I say I truly believe our people and our city who come to work here and all the departments, they come here because they love Raymore, not just a job, not just 40 hours. They love to come here, they love Raymore, they love the city. That makes them so much important, they do so much more than some people just go to work, get their check and go home and they don't care. I really believe that our people, our leaders, their people underneath them do love the city of Raymore, that's why they love to have these jobs and they come here, it's very important. Um, again, uh, when you talk about class one, ISO, the chief talk, you have no idea, I was insurance. When we would get a four years ago, that was pushing it. City might get a three. Never thought you'd hear of that. You get a two and now a one. That is something that's almost was never heard of. Cause we would talk years ago that laugh about it. People, I'm gonna get a two or a one. We'd laugh them out. It never happened. That's just how important that is. People really need to take that. They got enough manpower, the facilities, and what they do to get a, a one ISO rating. That's phenomenal. It's super big. Uh, I guess. Uh, Besides that, last thing I want to say, good job, Mayor Pro Tem. You did a fine job. You really did. Got in here. I know it's a lot of pressure. Your first time up, Mayor's gone, and but you did a real good job. You had a busy night, a lot to get through. Congratulations to you. Awesome job. Again, thank you to the city. Thank you to the police. Thank you to what you did. It's a great night, and we have a great city and a great way to go. And thank you, Mr. Tapp. We know you're pushing hard. <laughs> and I, Olive Garden, okay, just to keep Mr. Barrett's happy. Give me an Olive Garden. There we go. How's that? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, thank you to the Police Department and Public Works Department. And also, I just want to say thank you to all the city staff. Um, I don't think we do that enough. Uh, thank you for, to uh, South Metro for partnering with us. It's very appreciated um, as we serve the same citizens. And then I also wanted to say that I will be absent for tomorrow's meeting. Um, and I wanted to apologize to my daughter for missing her second second time I've missed a band concert this year due to being at city council so she's probably done now but uh, anyway apologize to her and thank you thank you so much thank you mr. Burke mr. Jacobson thank you mr. mayor pro tem I'll uh, join with everyone else in saying you did a fine job this evening um, I know how nerve-wracking that can be when you haven't had a chance to sit in that seat before and learning all the processes and procedures and protocols and so you did a, a fine job. A um, couple things and it's all been touched on so I'll be brief on, on a lot of it. Uh, I agree, I, I, I can't believe 100% safety on the citizen survey so Chief, congratulations. Uh, just to give you a little perspective, if you were a baseball player and you hit a ball three times out of the ten that you go up, you make $50 million. 
Maybe you need to ask for a race. So, <laughs> but, but it, it, it's amazing, 100%. I mean, 100%. How often does anybody get 100%? That is absolutely amazing. Public Works, uh, Mr. Crass, awesome job. Uh, the, it was my privilege as, uh, years ago to serve on the Public Works Committee. It was the first committee I served on. I remember times when we had uh, salt mountains out here on the streets and uh, uh, trying to find a street sweeper even. And now we've, you've, gotten, you've, you've gotten this department to the point where I just thought it was an awesome job this year on snow removal. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and uh, so congratulations and thank you for all the work that you're doing on that. Um, I'm going to do a quick, I just want to do a quick congratulations to all their graduates who will be graduating this Friday from Ray Peck. Uh, and I uh, wish them Godspeed and, and their future endeavors. I'm finally going to finish up with something that I've been thinking about here uh, all week, and that is the citizen survey that we uh, were privileged to see here at our last work session. I can tell you as, as someone who was here in 2006 that you like to be comparing it to, <laughs> uh, I was blown away with the, uh, with the citizen survey, the satisfaction of the residents of this community. It was, uh, it, it, it makes you real proud uh, to be part of it. And I want to, Mr. Fairborn, I want to thank you and your staff and everyone involved for the fantastic job. Uh, that's not easily done. You and I know that. And uh, so for me to see those kinds of numbers, I, I, I was literally stunned just watching it. It was just that impressive. Also, along with those lines, I want to thank all of the council members who were here during that time because uh, that, is, that's, that shows an incredible communication between council, staff, and the citizens and communications at the end of the day is key to everything. You know, if there's, if, uh, if there's a miscommunication of some kind, that's when people kind of, you know, get a little concerned. But with everything we saw in that survey and with everything that went well, that tells me that staff is doing an incredible job and the council has done an incredible job, of course. And I'm thanking you because I was not here during that time. So I want you guys to know that I'm very impressed with what you accomplished. Um, and then I'm going to kick out a suggestion here. Back in the day when I was uh, at a former, uh, my business at KCTV, whenever we had a wonderful ratings period or something like that, why management, uh, and I would suggest in this particular instance maybe council with Mr. Fearborn, got together and cooked all of the staff hamburgers and hot dogs and ice cream, and we served them for all the serving that they do for us. So I'm just going to kick that out as an idea to give some thought to. Thank you. Well said, sir. And my favorite council member to listen to, I'll let you finish up the comments tonight, Mr. Townsend. What is that? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I will echo my colleagues to my right and my left as well uh, to not to delay the time any much longer, but I'll pick up where Mr. Jacobson left off with regards to the citizen survey. Um, we received the uh, report back from staff last week, which was excellent, um, very uh, excellent report from the citizens and giving us their input on where we can improve or what areas they're enjoying. Uh, that was uh, an eye opener as well and very um, encouraging uh, as far as the level of effort and, and the work that staff is doing uh, to make sure the city's running smooth. Uh, but also, um, it was highlighted uh, within that same survey with regards to the transportation. And as I sit on the MARC committee uh, with our Mr. Crass and others um, that we serve on a particular subcommittee, um, quickly realizing one of the challenges within that community is getting them to realize there's more uh, to the area than just Kansas City proper. Uh, and understanding to share the love when it comes to funding and making sure that our infrastructure into that city uh, where our residents, um, propon the proponents of our residents may work and, and entertain themselves. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that has come out of that, uh, they're taking a survey um, to allow the residents to give input on how their travels are, uh, where they go to and from work, whether it be school and different things, to so have an opportunity uh, to give some data into that organization to help prioritize projects. And one of the things we saw from that survey that we received from our citizens was their concerns with some of the roads uh, into the city that we don't own. We don't have the luxury of of just taking control of the 58 bridge because it's not within our city limits or I-49 proper and everyone wants to have that roadway widened. Uh, we don't own that stretch of the road. Our city limits doesn't butt up against that um, particular intersection. 
but with partnerships with the stakeholders in the community, uh, whether it be Belton, Grandview, uh, and Harrisonville, to our, or excuse me, Procura to our south, the MoDOT, or whether it be with um, Cass County or Jackson County, the, 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 our far the northern uh, city limits. Um, opportunities to kind of partner and come up with an opportunity or come up with a plan to kind of work together to, to get those concerns met. So it's an opportunity uh, to, as they determine that how we move KC, uh, some of our residents may have received a survey like I have um, to have an opportunity to provide your input, uh, to add to that data, uh, to show that yes, we do use the 58 bridge a lot and it has got more traffic than the Buck O'Neill bridge, uh, which got a lot of funding. So there's opportunities there. Um, uh, give an opportunity to, to um, provide why the bridges north of us, the overpasses, I should say, uh, north of Raymore are getting replaced, and those are south of us are getting built out and replaced, but the main arterial going between the two cities of Belton and Raymore are not. Um, that's very frustrating as residents to see that construction going on uh, around us, but you know, not necessarily in the areas that we feel of concern. So that's the challenges that, I, that Mr. Crass and I have um, with regard to the committees that we sit on and educating them on the concerns we have down south and the good work that Mr. Tapp is doing with getting the uh, development down here, the good work that Mr. Um, Cataract is doing with the development and the rooftops that are necessary for the businesses to come into the community uh, and our residents that are serve uh, and work and live in this community that commute uh, to and from this community. So we're doing our level best to make sure that those roads outside of here also get the same level of attention that you uh, enjoy within our city limits. So if you do have this survey, um, please submit it. Um, you're also rewarded with a $5 bill in the mail if you do. So there's an incentive that our marketing department likes to uh, make sure that gives a person a reason to do a survey. Uh, there's something in it for them. So I went to my $5 bill to come in and I'll add to the, the hot dog potluck. <laughs> <laughs> um, to make sure that everyone gets a hot dog. Um, but I would encourage those who have it, you know, you know, get it out. If you recycled it, pick it up. If not, you can definitely go on to howwemove.com, excuse me, howwemovekc.com uh, if you would like to participate if you didn't receive it. But please add your voice to this uh, so that we can also show to the MARC committee that there is a need for some infrastructure uh, support down south and not just up in the metro area. Thank you. Well said, sir. Perhaps, Mr. Eke, we could put a link to that on our website and let our citizens know about it and they could access it that way. Um, thank you all for your kind comments this evening. Um, Mr. Barber, I would say you were a notoriously easy grader, sir, but thank you anyhow. The very last person taken in the NFL draft in the seventh round is known as Mr. Irrelevant. That's who one feels like after here when you have a fine counsel that makes such wonderful and true comments about the staff and the city and the processes you all have done. So tonight I am Mr. Irrelevant when it comes to the comment section, but I will leave you with two anecdotes about the city and what a fine place it is and how lucky we all are to live here. Today I visited Hockridge Park, Mr. Mustine, as I do when I have a free moment because I'm like the child awaiting Christmas so that I can open my presents under the tree. And I was very impressed. I drove to the end of the road where the construction begins on the south parking lot. And there was a gentleman from the construction company, not a, a city employee, he was there. And as soon as I exited my car, he said, are you here to fish, sir? Because people have been coming up there to fish and he doesn't want them to go into the construction area. And he's been guiding them very safely around the fence. I was very impressed with that. This is the man who was either the, for, I think, foreman. So he's got other duties to do. And so he's got his employees coming back from work. But he's taking time to make sure our citizens are getting to enjoy the, uh, the fishing that we told them would be open during this time. And it's tough to do, as well as staying safe. Um, I've said before that I think we've seen an increase in our vendors of choice of late, that they have been for the large part, a very caring group of individuals. And they have read from our RFPs and from their interaction with staff that you had better care about this place if you intend to do business here. And I went on to ask the man about the status of the park and what they were waiting on and when we thought it would be open. He gave me an incredibly thorough briefing. It's not part of his job. He wasn't paid to do that. He had other duties, but he certainly took the time to do that. I could see the pride in his work and that he uh, really, really went on length about what a great space that is and what that will be. 
So we have many new things coming. That's just one. We have the improvements at TB Anna Station. You talked about the Arboretum Playground and, and many other things that are going on are really good news. And then the last thing I will leave you with, we, we always talk about how great staff is. So if any of you have ever witnessed the dynamic of a very large family, and the very youngest child of that group that is the baby, but maybe not when they're the baby, when they're 15 or they're 18, everybody rallies around the baby when there's something about to happen, okay? Something important. Well, that's kind of what I felt like this week because staff has, has doted on me all across the board, all across this from starting from Mr. Zur all the way down to the other end to make sure that I was prepared for the meeting, that I was informed, that I had all the stuff that I needed to do. What you are thanking me for is their preparation. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn, and please pass that on to staff. We do have, my understanding is we do have a reason to move into executive session this evening, sir, is that correct? At this time, I would entertain a motion to move into executive session. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we enter into executive session to discuss litigation and contract matters as authorized by Missouri Revised Statute 6 one zero point zero two one subsections one and twelve I'll second that I do have a motion and a second on the floor is there any discussion there is no discussion Miss Warner may I have a roll call vote please Councilmember Abdelgawad yes Councilmember Barber yes Councilmember Berenson yes Councilmember Burke yes Councilmember Serco yes Councilmember Holman yes Councilmember Jacobson yes Councilmember Townsend yes the motion passes unanimously, 8-0. We will now move out of the council chambers uh, to adjourn into executive session. We will return at the end of the executive session just to adjourn this regular session meeting. Thank you for being here.